Hi, and welcome back to the second part of the digestive system. In the first part, we discussed what happened when I ate a bite of this Pop-Tart. We discussed from the point of where I bit it with my mouth and it entered my stomach. So now, I'm going to take you through the rest of the digestive system. First, we're going to talk about some of the accessory organs of the digestive system. We have the pancreas, the gallbladder, and the spleen. The gallbladder is this pouch-like structure located near the liver, which concentrates and stores bile. So if this was my liver, the gallbladder is going to be this little green organ that you find on the underside of the liver. We have a bile duct, and this is a long tube that carries bile. The top half of the common bile duct is associated with the liver, while the bottom half of the common bile duct is associated with the pancreas. This is where it passes on its way to the intestine. Bile emulsifies, which means it liquefies or breaks down, lipids. And if you remember, lipids are fats. Bile is a really bitter, greenish-yellowish alkaline fluid, and it's stored in the gallbladder between meals, and upon eating, it is discharged into the duodenum, where it aids in the process of digestion. This is what happens when you get really, really sick and you keep puking and puking and puking. A lot of times at the very end of that, you'll throw up this nasty, really, really bitter tasting yellow stuff. And that's what you're throwing up is your bile. The next accessory organ that we're going to talk about is the pancreas. This is an organ that secretes both digestive enzymes as part of the exocrine system and hormones, which are part of the endocrine system, like insulin, and we'll get that later. Pancreatic juice digests all major nutrient types, so it will digest lipids, proteins, and carbohydrates. Nearly all digestion occurs in the small intestine, and all digestion is completed in the small intestine. The digestive enzymes of the pancreas digest proteins, and those are called trypsin and chymotrypsin. If you remember, all of that food that's been liquefied in the stomach is called chyme. So chymotrypsin is the enzyme that starts breaking that chyme down. The pancreas also digests starch, which if you recall, starch is a polysaccharide. And polysaccharides fall under the category of carbohydrates. The enzyme that breaks down carbohydrates, or starches, is called amylase. And if you recall from our first lecture, amylase is also found in your digestive enzymes and the saliva of your mouth whenever digestion begins. The pancreas also has buffers that neutralize the acid from the stomach. So if you look at this diagram, you can see two of the accessory organs that we just got through talking about. This is the gallbladder, which stores bile. And by the way, you can actually live without your gallbladder. A lot of people have to get it taken out because they have gallstones. So then they're no longer allowed to store bile in their common, uh, they'll store their bile in their common bile duct at this point, And they no longer need their gallbladder. The other accessory organ that's shown in this diagram is the pancreas which is aiding in the digestion and breaking down of all those biomolecules. This is also what is used to secrete insulin, and it helps maintain our blood glucose levels. The next organ we're going to talk about is the liver. The liver produces bile, which is stored in the gallbladder until it's needed. Again, the bile breaks up fats, and it acts like detergent to break up those fats. So fun fact, Bile contains colors from old red blood cells collected in the liver. Once these red blood cells get old, they become rusty, and that's what makes our feces, or our poop, brown. So, so far we've talked about the mouth, the stomach, the pancreas. In the mouth, again, we break up food, we digest starch with amylase, <clears throat> we kill germs because of the acid that's in our mouth, and it also helps to moisten our food. We've talked about the function of the stomach. It too kills germs because it has a very low or acidic pH. It also helps to break food down. 
and it digests proteins and stores food. The pancreas produces enzymes to digest proteins and starch. The liver produces bile, which is stored in the gallbladder, and it breaks up fats. So now we're going to move on to the small intestine. This is where most chemical digestion takes place. Simple sugars and proteins are observed into the inner lining. Fatty acids and glycerol go to the lymphatic system. The small intestine is lined with these finger-like projections that are called villi. Villi help to increase the surface area for absorption and they are only one cell thick. So the functions of the small intestine. It aids in chemical digestion. It is the major organ of digestion and absorption. And absorption occurs through the lining. The small intestine is over six meters long. And the small intestine has a huge surface area. It's 300 meters squared of surface area. And those villi, or finger-like projections, are what contributes to it having such a large surface area. The small intestine has three sections. The duodenum, which is where most of the digestion takes place. The jejunum, which is where absorption of nutrients and water occurs. And the ileum, which is also where absorption of nutrients and water takes place. The duodenum. The first section of the small intestine is called the duodenum. This is where acid from the stomach and food take place. It mixes with digestive juices from the stomach and the liver, the pancreas, and the gallbladder. So again, we've talked about the mouth, the stomach, and the pancreas. So absorption of the small intestine. Much of the absorption is thought to occur directly through the wall without the need for any special adaptations. And again, the reason this can occur is because of those finger-like projections called villi. Almost 90% of our daily fluid intake is absorbed in the small intestine. Villi increase the surface area of the small intestine, thus providing for better absorption of materials. So absorption through villi and microvilli. Again, these are finger-like projections. And you can see right here, they are one cell thick and they have little blood capillaries that go through these. This is why nutrients are able to be absorbed through them. And again, they're used to increase the surface area for absorption of nutrients. This is what villi look like under a microscope. So moving along to the large intestine or the colon. The main function of the large intestine is to reabsorb water. In one day, we use about 9 liters of water to digest the juices that are secreted. More than 90% of the water that we use is actually reabsorbed. When not enough water is absorbed, we get diarrhea. So whenever you get really sick, a lot of times your intestine doesn't have enough time to reabsorb the water. That's why you get cramps. So when you get cramps in your stomach, you call it your stomach cramps, but what's really happening is you're having involuntary muscle contractions of the muscles in your intestinal walls. And they're pushing all of your feces along with the water out way too quickly. So none of the nutrients are being absorbed either. If too much water is reabsorbed, you will get constipated and you won't be able to go to the bathroom. So, what else is going on in our intestines? We have a large amount of bacteria that grow in our intestines, and these are good bacteria. That's why people are always eating yogurt. You want to increase your good bacteria in the intestines. They're what helps break down some of the food and absorb the nutrients. One of the main types of bacteria that you're going to find in the human intestine is E. coli. They help to produce vitamins, especially vitamin K, and the B vitamins. They also generate gases. So they generate methane and hydrogen sulfide. 
This is what makes you pass gas or fart. So solid materials pass through the large intestine. These are undigestible solids, so fibers and things that we have not been able to absorb back into our bodies. Water is absorbed, and then vitamin K and B are reabsorbed with the water. The rectum is where solid wastes exit the body. The rectum is the very last section of the colon or the large intestine. This is where we eliminate our feces from. Undigested materials and extracellular wastes, mainly cellulose from plants. So we can't really break down the cellulose, which is what composes the cell walls of plants. So it goes straight through our intestines. That's a good thing though, because it helps clean us out and keep us healthy. Roughage and fiber, and masses of bacteria. Well, this concludes the second part of digestion.